Our scripture today is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21. Uh, Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word which you freely given to us, which helps us to know where it is you desire us to to, to walk. As the lamp unto our feet, Lord, it guides our way. And we thank you for your mercy and your presence in, in this instance. We also pray for your mercy to be upon the sermon, that it too may be used by you for you. Lord, we thank you for all that you are, and we pray this in, in, in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 to 21, hear now God's word. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being, with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our uh, our scripture today is a prayer of Peter's for the church in Ephesus. I'm trying to find out. I had to look this up in um, at Manor. It did not save. Okay. <clears throat> We're going to have a companion scripture today, and it was supposed to be from the book of Luke, uh, chapter 8, but actually I don't like it. So it's going to go from the book of Mark, chapter 24. The, the Mark one tells a little bit more. Uh, that's why we're going, going to that one. Um, so let me pull this up, and I'll, I'll read it to you in a moment. Okay. <clears throat> so, so Paul's praying for the church in Ephesus. And, and, of course, these are churches that he, he loves and he cares for, and he's writing letters to them to help shepherd them along as best as he can, even though he's not, 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 not there. Um, He has many people working for him, many people supporting him, so he hears all the time uh, how his individual churches are are going. He even sends uh, friends of his, such as Timothy and some others, to these churches just to check in on on them to deliver his his, uh, letters and and things like that. And one of the things that he prays for, as we see in, in, in this prayer, is that we see how important it is or no, what we see is, is what's important to Paul when it comes to, to his church, churches. So I want to read this again in, in part. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, that God may grant you, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner spirit, being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and you are being rooted and grounded in in, in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend uh, with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all all knowledge, so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. All this can be really shrunk down to a too-long-didn't-read kind of summary, which is Paul's praying that the people know Jesus. Not just know Jesus, but that they're filled with Jesus. An important thing that I've been trying to understand myself time and time and time again is what's the purpose of of us, of our church, of us as individuals. Why are we here? Joys and concerns uh, every Sunday is part of that, why we're here, to pray for one another, to support one another, to to try to help comfort for one, one another, 
to realize that we're not alone in this world, no matter what it is that we're going through or suffering from. It's nothing like an illness to make us feel alone. It's nothing like a hurt to make us feel like we're not supported by uh, others. And yet, when we're doing this with the church, with one another, and sharing it, we embrace one another, we pray for one another, we know that when we leave this building, that we don't leave church, but that we're always a part of church. We're always a part of Christ, Christ, Christ's body. And that support and that love that we have here, we have there, too. But that's not going away. And Paul wanted them to remember that their very existence and our very existence is to share God's love with one another. And we try to do that. We pray for healing. We pray for health. We try to supply needs. We try to supply um, uh, homes. We try to supply food. We try to supply clothing. Uh, we try to supply opportunities for people to, to go, go, go uh, to, to uh, camps and whatever the case might, 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 might be. Now, I listen to a, uh, I have a podcast that I, I enjoy. It's called um, uh, Smart Less. One here is Smart Less. Uh, if, if you haven't, it's okay. It's got three guys in it, um, Will Arnett, uh, Jason Bateman and Sean Hayes, you may know some of them. They're just big old friends, good, good, uh, but, but, but buddies. And uh, they invite another person into their friendship and they talk with them for an hour. And it's a nice little uh, interview. So I was listening to an interview with um, uh, Marshawn Lynch. Anyone know Marshawn Lynch? He was a running back, right? Running back, he retired now. In the midst of his retirement, he started um, a lot of on, on entrepreneurial um, uh, efforts, and one of them is a foundation that he helped to create where they uh, provide uh, education and training and, um, um, for, for in, 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 in inner city kids. Uh, it started off as a football camp, and it grew to uh, providing uh, uh, de degrees in art and in math and, and in all this kind kinds of stuff. He too, through his foundation, is providing for the, the needs of, of many. But what separates foundations, different foundations and the church, is that the church does it very specifically in the name and in the love of, of uh, Christ. And I'm not saying that Marshawn Lynch's uh, foundation is devoid of that. But I'm saying that the church should be very mindful of, of, of that. That all that we do, as we provide for the needs and, and, and the support and the love of others, should always be through Christ's love. And only through Christ's love and no other mo 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 motivation. The other scripture I'm going to read today helps us to see this from Jesus' per 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 perspective. Um, in, in Mark, chapter, whichever one I chose, chapter 5, verse 21 to 34, I'm not going to read all that. Jesus is healing the woman who, who had, had the hem, hem, hemorrhage of blood for like 12, 12, 12 years. Um, she was ostracized from society. She was a pariah. No one could touch her without being un, un, unclean. And she went up to Jesus and she touched the, the hem of, of his uh, cloak and she, she was healed. And Jesus asked, um, who touched me? He felt the power go out of him. And the woman came forward, explained her sit situation, and Jesus responded to her like this. Uh, verse 32, but Jesus kept looking around to see who done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from, from, from your suffering. When we read this, there's this phrase, that it's, a, it's a church phrase we hear quite a bit, go in peace. And I try to say every Sunday, go in peace. And, and what does that mean? Go and be at peace. Go and know everything's going to be okay. Go and, 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 and know that Jesus is with you. Uh, go and what, don't talk? 
I, because that's like peace, right? No, no noise. But the, the Greek here is what really gives us its power, its, its oomph. And it's, it's better translated, not go in peace, but go into peace. When you go into peace, it's even different. It's much more different. You're going to a place. We're not just go in peace, go and leave, and, and, and you're leaving this place. You're going out into the world, but go in peace. You're going into the dwelling of Jesus Christ. Oftentimes we think of this place, this building, as a dwelling of, of Jesus Christ. But if we remember the phrase that Jesus spoke to the woman, go into peace, know that when you go you're going in, into uh, Christ, into Christ's arms, into Christ's presence, into the, the very embrace, the very grasp, the very bosom of, of Christ him, 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 himself, where we can't get away, where we, uh, we can't escape, where we're held tightly and, and, and uh, loved. And it's not just a fleeting thing that we search for every moment, but it's an enduring thing that lasts forever. And he also says, go in peace and be freed from your suffering, which is kind of odd because first he says, daughter, your faith has made you well. You're already well, so where's the suffering coming from? Again, the Greek is helpful in this. It doesn't necessarily say, be freed from your suffering, but the better translation of this whole phrase is, go into peace and be made whole. Jesus isn't just concerned with our healing, our, our health, with uh, making sure that we have all that we need, food on our back, roof over, over our head, um, uh, food on our back, food in our belly, clothes on our back, roof over our, our, our head. He's not just concerned with that. He's concerned with our whole being, everything that we are. Go into peace, he says to this woman, and be made whole whole. In Jesus Christ, we find our completeness. As Christians, we believe this with all, all, all of our heart, that it's Christ who can provide for us everything that we need, not just the physical. And Christ does that through one another, but also the spiritual. As Paul was praying for the uh, church in Ephesus, I think Paul had this stuff in mind too. To know the depth, let me go back one here, so that we can comprehend with the saints what it's the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth of this love of Christ. We're not just providing shirts for those who need them, food for those who are hungry, housing for those who need housing. We are providing and should be providing the love of Jesus Christ. When we have a dinner and fill up bellies, we also fill up hearts. When we provide uh, money to someone who might need it, we also provide fellowship and, and relationship through Jesus Christ. This is the church. This is what Paul wanted them to understand. That it's just not part. We're in it for all, 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 all times and all all, all things. Share with you this final benediction from Jude 1, 24 to 25. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to God our Savior who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And go in, 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 into peace.